Hey everybody, we're coming to you today from Passau, Germany, which is on the Austrian border. We're about to take a cruise on the premier river cruise ship in SS Europe, Maria. the SS Maria Theresa. And we're gonna take you along for the ride. This is a perfect opportunity for us to, because I get asked a lot, what gear do I take when I travel and what kind of bags do I take when I travel? So I'm gonna show you. Now each trip is different. The, the Europe trip that we're doing now is gonna be different gear and different baggage than we're doing on the Tahiti trip, which is coming on right after this. The Europe trip is mainly, I wanna have the smallest, lightest cameras possible because I wanna be a tourist. I just wanna have fun. I just wanna have the light, the tiniest, tiniest little cameras I can have, but still take pretty cool, almost professional pictures. Uh, so I'm gonna show you what's in here and what I, how I packed it, what I'm taking. This is my main bag. This has been around the world like six times. And I'm gonna show you my main suitcase and what's in it and how I pack and why. So this is gonna be a fun trip. I'm gonna take you on different tours every day and I'm gonna show you what I use and how, and I think you're gonna enjoy it. So come with us on this beautiful river cruise through Germany, Austria, and Hungary. We're gonna end up in Budapest. So we'll, come on, let's have a good time. Yeah. So here we are in the room. This is an amazing ship. This is, uh, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like French royalty. Uh, I don't even know what style this is called, but it's, it's my, I call it the Disney style, the Disney fairy princess style. I love it. It's a floating palace. The cool thing about river cruises is you never feel anything moving. There's no waves. You just look out the window and you notice all these castles and hills and towns. It's like a big screen TV. Everything's just going by smoothly and they have a really nice restaurants and a lounge and everything and a, a workout room. So it's like a floating hotel. And and it never moves. You don't feel any rocking like on an ocean boat. I think river cruises are the way to go. And it's really low key. It stops in every city or these beautiful spots in Europe along the way. It's just so much nicer and relaxing than the big ocean ships. Anyway, uh, so here I am. And what I, I'm taking on this cruise, on this trip, is basically my main piece of luggage right here and my camera bag. And that's it. And Kara's got her stuff. Um, and I'm going to show you what I take. Basically, uh, the camera bag is a, it's by Think Tank. And my favorite one, the big one, it's a retrospective 50. And this is my main bag that I've had for years. And I take, this has been around the world a bunch of times. This is a really rugged, it's made with real heavy duty canvas material. And uh, it's like, I guess you could call it military grade. And it's, it's got Velcro and it keeps it shut. And it has all these partitions and bags, uh, uh, sections that, that you, I wanna show you what's in here in a second. Um, but this, this is a really, it's, it's a little heavier than most, but it's heavy duty, it's really well. And I can put my laptop in the back here with my passports and things. And it has side pockets, like on this side pocket, I can put my, uh, this is a two terabyte SSD hard drive where I put all my stuff at the end of the day to back everything up. And that just goes in the side here. Anyway, so I'll show you this in a second here. But my main suitcase, this one here, this is um, a very lightweight, when this is empty, it's so lightweight. It's like a, a Kleenex box. It weighs nothing. And, um, and I like that. I need that because my clothes, the two heaviest things you can take on a trip is clothes and photo equipment. And this is half clothes and half photo equipment. And they only allow you 50 pounds economy and what, 70 or 80 pounds first class. So you really, <laughs> you really have to be picky with what you put in here. But this weighs nothing. It's really, it's, it's hard. Um, and it's just this great case. I have five of these. When I went on the uh, cross country uh, tour for all the morning shows, we had five of these. And um, you get them at Walmart. They weigh nothing. They're really good. They weigh nothing. So um, 
and they don't cost much and they got four wheels and you got this thing here which is great for moving so i suggest go to walmart check out these things they're great anyway so i'll show you what's in here all right so this half is my clothes and this half is my camera gear and actually this isn't even all clothes and this right here i'll show you that in a sec i don't care that much about clothes kara's got all kinds she's got all the clothes and costumes so for me this is more important what's on this half all right here we go so let me turn this around so i can show you what this is so the first thing is this bag i don't carry this around with me when i walk around town all the time it's just really big and it's you know i don't need all this stuff for this particular trip, um, I'm taking the smallest cameras possible, the smallest, most lightweight stuff. So what I wanna do is travel light. So I have a smaller bag that I, every day I pick whatever I want. This camera with this lens or whatever it is. So I have this bag, which is smaller than that one. And inside of this one is an even smaller one, which has three compartments one for a small camera and two lenses or whatever I want a flash and a lens and a camera um, this is great because it can go around like this or like this and then this one has three compartments so I can put I can even put full-size cameras in here if I want but so every day you know I try to travel as light as possible all right let's get to the big stuff and then I'll get to the camera bag because that's really the cool stuff so here this is the unimportant stuff if I lose if they lose the luggage this stuff doesn't matter as much as that because that's the cameras and lenses so let's just start off with grabbing stuff so the first thing is two lights these are the brightest LED lights you can get off the internet um, that weigh nothing and are small and I these are full-time LED lights that I use to light myself up when I'm doing a video so and they, you can angle the beam really well I did a video on these uh, if you look at my other videos I did a video on these um, so I aim these at my face and it lights up my face when I'm out in light in bright sunlight or whatever as you know, fills in shadows so these are really good to have if you're doing videos if you're doing still pictures you probably don't need them all right, I have three tripods. The first, I want these everything to be as lightweight as possible. Um, so what I do is I weigh everything and I write it on here. This makes it easier for future reference. This is 37 ounces and it, this goes up to six feet high. So that's pretty good, 37 ounces, which is basically two pounds and it goes up to six feet this high up. Um, I got this off of Amazon. It's it's an X-Tech H, uh, it's an X-Tech xh72 trb it's kind of cheap quality but it's really lightweight and if you take care of it it's pretty good i mean you can use it for video pan tilt head uh it's plastic but it goes up to six feet high and it weighs very little the most important thing for me when i travel it's not ruggedness it's lightweight and getting the most out of it so this is a really good um cheap tripod and if it breaks so what i buy three i have three other ones they can buy like four of them for they, they're what they weigh almost not i mean they cost almost nothing second one up is my promaster travel four this one you can see i wrote on here it goes up to five feet and it weighs only about 30 ounces so that's really good this thing goes up to five feet weighs 30 ounces the promaster travel four this is the travel one this weighs only 15 ounces and it goes up to three and a half feet this is really lightweight. I can just grab this with one hand, just walking around town where I don't plan to use a tripod, but just in case, I can take this little thing. Now, these tripods are not just for cameras. I use these for lights, too. Like, if I want to do a video of me talking, say, in this room, I can mount a light on the tripod. And then, you know, you can aim it directly really well with the pan tilt head. So these come in more handy with for more than just... Uh, I've actually used tripods sometimes for putting a, a boom mic on it or something. You never know. All right, next up we have, I don't even know where to, okay, this thing here. This is a Lastalite. This is a little portable pop-out uh, for white balancing, gray card. Then we have my Sennheiser wireless uh, uh, have mic system. Then there's a portable, oh wait, here's a selfie stick. This is a really good one. It goes really long. Look how long that thing goes. That's a nice long selfie stick. 
All right, then we have my chargers. This is my all the chargers for my my battery stuff. This is a uh, a cleaning kit for if I ever uh, get dust or anything on my uh, sensors, on my digital uh, sensors. This is a cleaning kit for that, just in case. Then I have my audio equipment. This is my um, recording equipment. So here we have two recorders. And there's a third one, task cam. I have two of these DR10Ls. Um, here's a Sennheiser wi uh, portable wireless mic system. And then I have my microphone. Oh, by the way, this thing here is really good. This is another Think Tank product. Uh, this is a, you know, really good. They have two compartments here. It zips up. This is really good um, for putting stuff in. This thing here, I don't know if you noticed, this is a plastic case that you can see through and it's kind of hard which is really good which I'm also using for this thing which is by the way my headphones but these things are great because they're pretty rugged they're, they're kind of hard so they protect things these are made for women or girls that you know for makeup and beauty supplies and stuff and I get these at um, the container store including these things these are all container store stuff and that um, and this, this is all stuff from the container store, which are great for because you can see through them and they're pretty heavy duty. They're better than like glad baggies or something like that. The headphones I'm using are, these are C now, uh, SMH 1000. These are SMH 1000. These are, these are CNAL uh, headphones, which are really good for monitoring audio on location. They collapse really small like that and they go into one of my cases there. All right, so here I have my microphones. I have a Sennheiser ME102. I have a Sanken COS 11D, a, a DPA 4060. Here's another Sanken COS 11D with a Electrosonics portable digital recorder. Uh, I, and then I also have, but wait, there's more. Here's another one. I have a uh, Sennheiser ME102 XLR version and a COS 11D XLR version. And then I have a Ceramonic uh, portable rec XLR recorder also with a Fedhead Phantom for cleaning up the audio. And so there's that. And then I have a uh, DPA headset microphone and I have my, this is my ND filters and a little a small uh, LED light in case I want to just light something up at a restaurant, something like that. But ND filters, you can't go anywhere without those. Then I have my portable flash. This is my cheap little one. This is a Godox TT600, which I use if I don't want to take the heavier one, which I'll show you right now. The heavier flash is my Godox AD200. Now, in here, as you can see, this is the 8200 here. You notice there's no battery in here. That's because you cannot take lithium ion batteries and, and uh, put them on a checked luggage because they've been known to explode on airplanes. You have to carry lithium ion bodies on you personally. So the empty battery space I use to uh, put other things in, in this case, a uh, flash um, trigger. Now, this thing here is a great, powerful, portable flash unit that this thing goes on to. This head here, this thing is a great flash attachment for the 8200 because it, it's a small pair of ball. It has a diffuser on it and I can hold my 8200 with that with just hand hold it with the camera on one hand and this is my flash on the other. No light stands needed. This, this flash is powerful but it's not so heavy that I can't hand hold it. It's just big enough. I'm just just the right size for hand holding and it's just good. So anyway, so here's one uh, attachment that I use. The other attachment that I use is this thing. This is the it's a little soft box that is made for the uh, anything that's Godox like the AD360 or the 8200. So you screw that together there, and 
then you put this on there and then that attaches to the AD200 like that and now here's something that's a little bit more of a soft light that I can use I can hand hold with the camera in one hand and this in the other and I can just walk around anywhere in town in Europe on a, as a tourist I don't need a light stand because the minute you have a light stand you start needing permits and then you get in trouble and stuff like that the, you just hand hold it go like this click click and you keep going click 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 and keep going so this is like a portable little photo studio that you can take with you um, and if and the cool thing is uh, well to activate the um, this thing I have a portable uh, flash unit which is a Godox X1 this is made for Sony which is for my 6400s and my A7s and stuff like that so for my Sony cameras I use this for my non Sony cameras like the Panasonic's and that I use either my newer flash trigger set which is this it's pretty small it's great it's a nice little soft but what I really am getting into nowadays is this tiny little thing and I made a video about this the flash Q uh, flash trigger, the world's smallest flash trigger set so this goes on the camera and this goes on to whatever it is you want. And this is able to trigger the AD200 because there's a hole in the AD200 that you can plug this into. So now this can be triggered by any camera that has this on the hot shoe. Any camera that has a hot shoe can be triggered, can trigger the AD200. Now it's not high speed sync, but I showed you in the other video how you don't need high speed sync to do daylight fill flash. Anyway, so I'm going to show you in a second how I use this, but. Um, so that's my, that's that right there. I also need obviously when you're traveling in Europe, you need your power adapters and and you know all kinds of adapters and things like that and a power strip to charge all the millions of batteries that you have. All right, speaking of batteries, that gets me to the the uh, what's in my case, travel my carry case. So this is basically what I load into my, have loaded in this case for my Europe trip into my main suitcase. This is what's in there. It's mainly support equipment. It's tripods, lights, and audio. That's what goes into my main big suitcases. Tripods, light stands if I need them, audio and lights. Flash and uh, full-time lights. So that's what this is. Now, this thing, let me get some room here. Watch this. This is really cool. I'm going to snap my fingers and all this stuff is going to disappear. Ready? Watch this. Ta-da! This is my carry bag. This is just what I just loaded up for the airplane. This is not how I carry it around town. In airplanes, you cannot take lithium ion batteries and check them on in your check-in baggage. You have to carry them with you. So the first important thing that you have to do is carry your batteries with you so that's what this is and I have one of those great clear cases that is I got a container store that's made for women's makeup and stuff but these are this is great for carrying stuff like this anyway so the main thing this whole purpose of this bag is the most expensive stuff in other words my cameras and lenses this never leaves my side when I travel when I'm going on an airplane or something like that so if I lose the main luggage the check-in luggage I can still go on with life but this is where all the money is it's my cameras and lenses this is my this is my life so anyway so let me show you what I have here now this trip my Europe trip as I said it's about the smallest lightest cameras possible this is just a fun trip and I, but I still want to be able to walk around town. There's some great locations, old cities, old castles, old towns, where I can take some great pictures with Kara. And you know, I like to have as much professional look as possible. Um, but I don't want to have to carry big, heavy equipment. So that's why I'm, the whole purpose of this trip is let's take the smallest cameras possible that can still take a flash and have interchangeable lenses. So that's micro four thirds and one APS-C or two APS-C cameras. Now what I'm going to do is every day I'm going to pick one or two cameras and take them with me and leave the rest at the, hotel, at the, at the ship here. Um, so I got a whole bunch of cameras to choose from because they're really small. Um, but I'm not taking any big cameras, no full frames. That That's for the next trip. That's the Tahiti trip where I do my Sports Illustrated. Big fancy lights, big cameras, and all that stuff. But this is the exact opposite. This is the smallest, smallest little tiny little things possible. So I'm going to show what I got. The first one is, let's start with small. This is, oh, gee, how's that for small? This is a tiny little camera. This is a Lumix Panasonic GM5. 
look at this little thing and of course interchangeable lens cameras the reason i like this one isn't because it's not only because it's one of the world's smallest interchangeable lens cameras with micro four thirds lens mount but it has a hot shoe so i can take off camera flash and it has a viewfinder this thing actually has a viewfinder that is amazing they they don't make cameras this small with a viewfinder um this is just with an interchangeable lens so i love this thing the they don't make these anymore you have to get them there's you can get them on ebay once in a while it's a gm5 the viewfinder is not that great but it, it's better than having no viewfinder at all here's some pictures i took with it already so far just for fun and yeah i'm going to make a review of this camera i'll show you more of what i do on this trip as i make more videos but this is a good start for my micro four thirds here's another camera this is a similar camera that's even smaller but it has no viewfinder but it has the same lens mount, the Micro Four Thirds. Look at how tiny this thing is. This is smaller than that. This is like a deck of cards. That is tiny little camera with interchangeable lens, Micro Four Thirds. I can put any lens on there. This is a GM1. Panas I had to get it from Japan. This is a Panasonic GM1. And <laughs> for just a little tiny camera, that's pretty amazing. Then the next Panasonic that I have is a gx1 this is the gx1 this again is an interchangeable lens camera it has a hot shoe but no viewfinder but this is pretty heavy this has got a lot of features uh for for what it is for being a compact camera all these these are all panasonic lumix micro four thirds interchangeable lens cameras and of course i had to bring my gx my one of my favorite cameras the gx850 um, all these cameras, all these lenses are interchangeable. I just happen to have them on these cameras at this time. Um, so here's a number of Panasonic Lumixes uh, that I have with me. The lenses that I have are my Mzoico 45mm 1.8. This is a great lens for taking uh, photos with uh, blurry background. Uh, a, a 25 millimeter 1.4 by Lumix. This still takes blurry backgrounds, even though it's a 25 millimeter. Here's a 15 1.7, and this is a 17 1.2. Even this one has somewhat of a blurry background, which is great. So these little cameras, you'd be surprised. They can take some pretty good pictures. Here's some pictures I've taken so far. I haven't even started my cruise yet, and here's some test pictures that I've been taking. Just playing around with these, just getting ready and warmed up. These cameras come with kit lenses like this which is a 12 to 32 zoom now some of you might be tempted to use something like that as this 12 millimeter but the picture quality is not that great i suggest not using the kit lenses i mean they look when you take pictures of them they look kind of amateurish and they're not that sharp so i suggest using better higher quality lenses a lot of the, the what makes a picture look great it's not necessarily the camera it's the lens so this is my micro four thirds setup now here comes a second camera that i i'm just so falling in love with it's a samsung nx 500. again they don't make this anymore but my god this is an amazing amazing camera it takes such amazing pictures i'm going to do a video about this camera just by itself this is a 45 1.8 um, lens that takes pictures that look 3d and I also have, this is the heaviest lens I brought. This is an 85 1.4. Heavy, this is the heaviest lens I brought, but it's also for the Samsung. It takes amazing pictures. Really, really thrilled with that. And then all the way up, if I want to get serious, I've got my 6400 from Sony, APS-C camera. This right now has a 30 millimeter Sigma 1.4. Great wider angle lens. Then I have my 50, my Sony 50. 1.8 and then my the new famous 56 1.4 great blurry backgrounds great portrait lens by sigma and then for some of these cameras that don't have a viewfinder like this one i have my this is my portable little attachment viewfinder which i made a video about which you can see here and this is great when i'm outside and i'm you know in the sunlight i just attach it to the there and i look through here and it turns the whole back screen into a giant viewfinder look how big that eyepiece is that's a huge huge eyepiece uh, it's bigger than even like big professional cameras so it turns the whole rear screen of this little camera into a giant viewfinder so that's how you get around cameras that don't have a viewfinder
So there's that. Um, okay, what else I have in here is this. Never leave home without this. This is the best lens cleaning thing that I've found. It's by Hoodman. It has a two-part thing. It has one compartment which has a wet wipe and one compartment which has a dry wipe which you use afterwards. This cleans up any lens instantly. It's perfect. Uh, I have a whole bunch of these that I take with me wherever I go. I highly suggest the Hoodman two-step lens cleaning system. All right, then I have my air blower for blowing the dust off first before I use the lens cleaner. Um, then I have my remote for using the 6400 remotely. This is a, a miscellaneous thing, but it's really helpful. It's a bunch of clamps. This is Mr. Clampett and this is Mrs. Clampett. All right, so anyway, what we use these for mainly is costume stuff. Uh, when uh, Kara is doing her costumes and we're on location, it always looks good to have the clothes be a little tighter. So we would pull the, the clothes tight in the back and then attach uh, a clamp like that all up and down the back or anything like that. I mean, sometimes you need it for other things to hold cords or something, but it's always good to have some clamps for miscellaneous use. And uh, so that's basically what, this is what's in my camera bag. Now what I'm gonna do is every day, I'm not gonna take all these cameras at once, although what's kind of cool is I could take like a couple of these, like, you know, I could take uh, one with a wider angle and one with a more telephoto look and they're so lightweight. I don't care if it looks stupid or not, you like, <laughs> like some cheap tourist, but you know, I can do a telephoto and I can do a wide angle or even a mid range or I can even have three of these because they're so small. It doesn't matter. They don't weigh anything. Um, so, but generally what I do is I would pick one or two cameras and then spend the whole day walking around with that. And I would put them in, These cameras are so small that even this little thing here, which is about the size of a, I don't know, I could just put a camera in here and another lens if I wanted to, or a flash and a lens, and you know, and then I would just carry it around like that or whatever. You know, it, it's it's really small. But if I want a bigger one, I would have this this bag here. Or anything that's like a middle size I don't have to take the big one for everything this is more for full-size stuff full frame but you know just carrying something like this and I could put my passport and stuff in the front there even this one I have the passport in the front and my cameras in there this is not that big it's not that big of a deal um, so this is about as big as I'm gonna go for Europe all right so here's what I was saying about earlier I have my world's smallest flash trigger attached to my uh, AD200 and I can walk around with this just like this walking around and in this hand I have this tiny world's smallest uh, camera interchangeable lens camera with a the other end the flash trigger on the top it's like how small that thing is so here I have a camera with a viewfinder an EVF a flash trigger a removable lens and here's my off-camera flash so I can take some pretty professional looking pictures with this. This is a, this is a pretty professional uh, Lumix lens here, a 25. It's a really good lens. And if I want to go a little lighter than this, then I can just take my TT600 and just, you know, like that. Now I really look like a tourist. This is really small, but this is still good for taking pictures like, you know, in a place like a restaurant or, you know, more close quarter stuff. And you still can do some outdoor fill flash with this if you're close enough. But if you want to do some more serious stuff, this is a great setup. So, I mean, this is, I don't think you can get a camera smaller than this that has interchangeable lens and a flash trigger and a EVF on it. So this is my setup for Europe right now. And I'm going to show you pictures as I go throughout this trip. And the, oh, by the way, the secret to taking outdoor flash that looks cool, where you have blurry background and a darker background and a fully lit foreground is the, the ND filters. So all these cameras have a uh, ND filter on the front. Sometimes if it's a blue sky with white puffy clouds, I use a polarizing filter to really pop the sky with the blue and the white. So that's what I basically do while I'm on this trip. 
is this one. Now the next trip where we go to Tahiti, it's going to be a whole different setup. That's going to be all full frame cameras. The smallest I'm going to go is maybe a 6400 with the APS-C, but most of it's going to be full frame. So that's going to be a whole different setup. That's going to be three of those giant suitcases. <laughs> Big difference in, uh, in travel stuff. Um, but for this, I want to show you what's possible with tiny, tiny little cameras. Tiny little cameras like this and still take great pictures if you know what you're doing. The secret is the lens. If the camera's working right, it's really the lens that makes the difference. Um, so stay tuned for the next few videos. I'm going to take you along on my trip to Europe and I'm going to show you the kind of pictures that I take with these little things. And I hope you're inspired to, you know, that you don't need to spend a lot of money to take great pictures anywhere and any time i mean and it doesn't it's not heavy and it's not expensive you don't have to spend all this stuff so i'm going to show you the ex the expensive side but also the cheap side and the fun side i think the smaller lighter and cheaper it gets the more fun it gets the less pressure it is to do serious stuff but you can take great pictures it gives you more freeway to tinker and have fun and that's what photography should be right it's it's the thing to have fun to tinker and enjoy it um so stay tuned and i hope i inspire you to try your own fun things in photography so tell your friends about marcus picks m-a-r-k-u-s-p-i-x stay tuned because we got some fun stuff coming up see you in the next video